Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Multiplying Expressions. This is part one. So here we combine lots of different skills. We have already talked about what happens when you multiply terms together that have exponents. And if the bases are the same, we know that we can now add the exponents. But here, the multiplication that we're going to do is going to be more complex than in the last lesson. We're going to have parentheses, we're going to be using the distributive property, and then of course we're going to have to know how to combine like terms, which you are already learned, and also what to do when these exponents come into play. How do we simplify those? So let's just jump into our first problem. Let's take a look at if you have x and you multiply it times parentheses x plus 1. Now, when students look at this for the first time, a lot of times people, they just flip out because it is so un unlike anything we've ever learned as, as a younger student, it looks just so difficult, right? But just take it one step at a time. What do you have? You have x, which is just some number. I don't know what it is, but it's something out there, some number, some unknown number. And then I'm multiplying times parentheses. What happens when you multiply something on the outside times a parentheses? Well, we use that distributive property we talked about. The x gets multiplied times every term on the inside. It gets distributed into everything. Now, before we go on anymore, let's just review that distributive property. Let's say we have 2, and on the parentheses, on the inside, 3 plus 1. All right? So what do we do here? Well, we can, of course, simplify it the way that we normally simplify it by order of operations. We would do this first. 3 plus 1 would be 4. And then we still have to multiply that times 2. And then you would get an answer. 2 times 4 is 8. So we know the answer to this is 8. But using the distributive property, we also know that we can do it a different way. We can multiply times everything on the inside and distribute in here. And then 2 times 3 uh, is going to be 6. We multiply times 2 times 3. And then 2 times 1 is 2. And we have to add them together. Why? Because there's a plus sign on the inside. So the 2 gets multiplied times 3, and then it gets multiplied times 1. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 1 is 2, and it's linked with a plus sign. And of course, then we get also 8. We get the same answer no matter what we do. If we distribute into each interior term, then we get an answer of 8. If we don't do that, and we just do the parentheses first and then multiply, we get the same thing. So let's apply what we know about distribution to this, to this situation over here, which looks scary, but it's not so scary. So we have x times x. So let's just write it out, x times x. But then we have a plus sign, so we have to link it. And then we have x times 1. Right Now let me ask you a question. What is x times x? We know how to write exponents. So this is just x squared. right? And what is x times 1? Well, that's just x. So we have x squared plus x. Now here's where a lot of students trip up, because they want to combine these. Right, because they both have x's, right? I want to combine them, but you can't do that because remember, in order to combine like terms, in order to combine any terms, the, the variables must match, which in this case the variables do match, but the exponents must also match. And they don't match, so I can't combine them. These are unlike terms because x squared is like a it's like an entity, it's like buffaloes, and then this x is like a totally different in entity, it's like airplanes. I can't really add buffaloes to airplanes meaningfully, so I can't do it. So I just say this is done. Now, what does this physically mean, that this is equal to this? What it means is if I put any value I want in for x, because x is the same thing in both locations, and I calculate it, and then if I do the same thing, put the same value of x in down here, I will get the same answer if I do it this way or if I do it this way. In fact, let's just take the simplest number we can think of, 1. Let's just say x is 1. Then I put a 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 2, and there's a 1 out here, 2 times 1 is 2. But if I put a 1 here and a 1 here, then 1 squared is still 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And this is a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So no matter what value of x I put in, if I put a decimal in, if I put a fraction in, if I put negative numbers for x or positive numbers, no matter what value of x I put in, it doesn't matter. This ugly looking thing up here is exactly equal to this ugly looking thing down here. They look totally different, but they calculate the same thing no matter what value of x I put in. That's why there's an equal sign there. And this we consider to be a little simpler than this. And so that's what we're doing. We're simplifying the expression. All right, the first problem always takes more talking. Let's move on to problem number two. It'll take less talking, I promise. Let's say we have on the outside 2 times a, and then on the inside we have a plus 3. All right, what we have is this quantity, 2 times a. You can think of it as kind of being together, 2a. And it's multiplied times something in a parentheses. We want to distribute it in. So what happens is 
basically this whole thing right here gets distributed and multiplied times the first term and times the second term. Both of these items get distributed in because they're both multiplied together and they're both sitting outside multiplied times the parentheses here. So they kind of go in together. So you have two times a and it's multiplied times this a and then it's linked with a plus sign and then the two a gets multiplied in times the three. So it's two a times three. Make sure you understand what's happening. The entire thing on the outside is what is getting multiplied in, not just the A. It's not like just the A goes and the two sits there. Because they're multiplied on the outside like this, they act as a unit. They go in times the A, they go in times the three. And so that's what we have here. And then two times A times A is just two A squared. And then we multiply the numbers. Two times three is six and then A. So we have two A squared plus six A. This is the final answer. Now I'm writing it all out in the beginning so that you get a feeling for it. But after a while, you'll start to realize you multiply in. So you're gonna have a two times one is two and then a times a is a squared. And then you mentally you'll go in and multiply times the three. Two times three will be six and there is no a to combine with here. So the a will just come along for the ride like this. But I think in the beginning, it's going to be a lot easier and, and clearer if we just write everything out. What about five times y multiplied by y plus two? All right, so this, kind of like this whole thing that's sitting on the outside gets multiplied times each little interior term like this. So what do I have here? I have five times y multiplied by y, but it's linked with a plus sign, and then I have the five y on the outside getting distributed in times two. Now what do we do here? This is just gonna be five y squared, y times y is five squared, and then five times two, we always multiply the numbers and get 10 y. 5y squared plus 10y, and this is the correct answer. All right, again, writing it all out like this, you won't probably have to do that after you get comfortable and confident in what you're doing, but here in the beginning, it's, a, it's a really good for us to do that. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's take a look at the next problem. What about b multiplied by three times b plus seven? So again, this b kind of bombs itself in and gets multiplied times each interior term like that. So what do I actually have? I have b from the outside multiplied by the first thing, which is 3b, linked with a plus sign, then b times seven. So what do I have? I multiply the numbers here, but there's only a three, but then the b is still multiplied by the b, which is b squared. And then b times seven is, we always write the number first, seven times b, and so that's it. I cannot combine this with this because this term is different than this. b squared is different because the exponents are different. For the terms to be the same, the variables must be the same, and also the exponents must be the same. Same problem here. The variables are the same, but the exponents are not the same, so I can't combine them. Same problem here. I can't combine them because the exponents are different. And so the only time you can, buy, you can combine things, as we kind of learned before, is if you have like 2x plus, you know, 3x. The variables are the same. The exponents are both 1, so it's like 2 fish plus 3 more fish. You can say you have 5 fish. Or as another example, what about 3x squared plus 6x squared? The variables are the same and the exponents are the same. So this is the same type of term as this. And so three plus six is nine. And so you could say nine x squared. So it's like, you know, three buffaloes plus six more buffaloes. When the terms match, it's like the objects are the same. So you can add them. But here the objects are totally different. The objects are totally different. The objects are totally different, so we can't combine it any further than what I'm writing down on the board. All right, next problem. Let's say we have a 7x on the outside times 2x plus 3. Now let's try, let's try to do this without blowing it all out. And then we'll, we'll still blow it out at the end, but let's try to do it first. We're going to take this 7x and multiply in. When we multiply times the first term, we multiply the numbers. 7 times 2 is 14. And then we're multiplying the x's, x times x, same base, both exponents are one, we add them, one plus one is two, so 14x squared. And then we link that with a plus sign and we distribute n times the three. We multiply the numbers, three times seven is 21, and then we have this x times, there's no x's to combine with, so the x just, it's, it's just comes along into the answer because there's nothing else to combine it with. So 14x squared, plus 21x, that is the right answer. But just as a check, because we're learning here in the beginning, let's multiply it. It's gonna be seven x times this first term, two x. Link it with the plus times seven x uh, times three. 
and now you can more clearly see we're multiplying the numbers and we're combining these exponents by adding the exponents here. And then seven times three is 21 and the X can't be combined with anything X. That's why, it, with any other X's, that's why it comes along into the answer. So we'll shift gears to trying to do it first without writing everything out and then checking ourselves. And eventually we'll take the training wheels off completely. What about three times A multiplied times four times A minus two? Let's see and think what would happen if we distribute this thing in times each of these terms. Don't forget it's linked with a minus sign now. All right, so multiply here. We multiply the numbers, three times four is 12. And we multiply the variables. It's the same base. They both have an exponent of one, so we add them. One plus one is two, so it's a squared. Now we link it, not with a plus sign, but with a minus sign. And now we have to distribute this in here. We've already got the minus sign, so now we're just looking at the number. Two times three is six. And a, we can't combine with any other a, so the a just comes along for the answer. 12a squared minus 6a. And again, because we're, we're learning here, let's blow it out here. We have three times a multiplied by the first term, four times a, linked with a minus sign, then the same three a, multiplied in times the two. And now you can more clearly see, we're gonna multiply these numbers, and then we're gonna multiply these variables, adding the exponents to give us a squared. The minus sign comes, the numbers get multiplied, and there's nothing for this a to combine with. That's why it flows into the answer like that. All right, let's move along. We only have, I think, three problems, or maybe four problems left. Let's say we have six times y times eight times y minus seven. What do we think we're going to do? We're gonna multiply the six y times the first term. Eight times six we know is 48, multiply the numbers. Y times y, same base, we add the exponents, y squared. Now it's linked with a minus sign and now we have to multiply these. Six times seven is 42. And y can't be combined with anything else there so it just comes along for the ride, so 48 y squared minus 42y. You see how I just, I got the answer with really, it doesn't seem like I'm doing any work, but sometimes there's nothing to show other than you have to know the rules. So let's write it out just for, just to, to practice here. We have 6y, multiply by the first term, 8y, linked with a minus sign. Then we have the 6y multiplied by seven. Now you see we're multiplying to get 48, we're multiplying to get y squared, minus sign. The six times the seven is the 42, the y, it just comes into the answer. There's nothing to combine it with. All right. One more where we kind of blow it out. After that, we're gonna stop it. What about 4b times negative 5b plus six? Now, what do we think we're going to do? We're gonna distribute this in. Well, we multiply the numbers four times. Now, this is negative five. So that's negative 20 because positive times negative is negative. Four times five is 20. Now we have b times b, that we can combine those exponents and add them for b squared. Now there's a plus sign linking this, and then we have this times the six. We multiply the number, six times four is 24, and this b can't be combined. There's no b here, so it doesn't get combined with anything, and so the answer is negative 20b squared plus 24b. Now this will be the last time we blow the answer out and kind of like expand it. Here we have four times b, multiplied by negative five times b. I'm using parentheses because the negative sign is clearer when I wrap it in parentheses. Adding to that this, four times b, and it's multiplied by six, this one here. So multiply in, multiply in. Now you can see this multiplied times negative five is negative to 20, and then the b times b is the b squared. The plus sign is here. The six times the four is the 24, and the b, it just comes into the answer because there's nothing else to combine it with. All right, that was the last time that we're going to kind of like show everything blown out because at some point we have to stop uh, here. And so we're gonna try to take the training wheels off here. 5x plus seven on the inside. What do you think we're gonna do? Well, this negative three x, we're gonna take this and we're gonna multiply it in to both of these interior terms here. But it's a negative three times five, which is a negative 15. Right? And then x times x, we can combine those. Same exponent, one plus one is two, so it's x squared. And then the plus sign comes in, is linking it, and then this has to be multiplied times this. Seven times three is 21, but because it's a negative, we're multiplying, it's gonna be a negative 21. So check it out, we linked it with a plus sign, but now we have negative 21, 
and then x times nothing. There's nothing here, so it doesn't combine with anything, and it just comes into the answer. But notice what we have. We have negative 15x squared plus, because it was linked with a plus, but now we have a negative 21. Remember, from earlier lessons, we know that when you have plus minus, plus a negative number, it's the same as subtraction. So you can leave it like this, but it's really way better. We're always gonna write it like this instead. Plus minus, we just write it as subtraction. 21x, like this. Negative 15x squared minus 21x, and that's gonna be the final answer. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. What about negative 9a? multiplied on the inside by negative 2a minus 1. All right, what do we think we're going to do? We're going to multiply in. We have a negative 9a times this term, but it's negative 9 times negative 2. That's a positive 18. So this is going to be positive 18, and then the a times a is going to add those exponents for a squared. We link it with a minus sign from here, and then we're going to multiply negative 9a times 1. And so what we get here is on the inside here, it's gonna be one times the negative 9a here, and so it's gonna be negative 9a. And so we're gonna have 18a squared. Double negatives always make a positive, so really this becomes a positive 9a. And so we get 18a squared plus 9a. Now there's two ways to think about it here. I'm teaching you that when you distribute in, this becomes your sign, and then you multiply in times the one, and then you have to change the sign. But really, you can start to think of it as when I when I take this thing on the outside and I multiply it in times the second term, the second term really is a minus one, a negative one really. So instead of just thinking about it as linking it with a minus sign and then times one and then change it later, you can also think of it as negative nine A times negative one. And that's gonna give you positive nine A. So there's different ways to think about it. So this times this negative two A gives us the positive term. And then we could just literally write down that this negative nine A times negative one, because this is kind of like the term you're multiplying by, negative one there is gonna give you a positive 9a. So however you wanna think about it is fine with me, uh, as long as you're consistent and you get practice and get the right answers, I'm fine with it. So here, I'd like you to practice multiplying these expressions. We're combining lots of different skills. We're combining the distributive property along with combining exponents by adding the exponents, along with simplifying you know, expressions. And we now know that we cannot combine these because this term is an a squared term and this term is an a term and they're different, even though the variables are the same. This is different than this. The only way that you can combine these further is if I, like what I taught you right at the beginning of the lesson. If the variables are the same and the exponents are the same, then you can combine them. Same down here, you can combine them by addition. But in all these cases, we end up with things that we can't combine, so we have to leave it like that and you have to get used to seeing that. So practice all of these, and then follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills with multiplying expressions.